Kelly. I mean, uh, additionally, we looked at the phase two xenobiotic enzymes, and this time they are very similar to each other. Uh, GSTA2 is the only one which is expressed in the primary, but not in the iPSC model. But on the contrary, SOLT1B1, for example, is higher than uh, the primary, and it also expresses PNMT. In terms of transporters, we also see a very similar uh, expression between the iPSC and the primary model. Uh, the main differences are ABCB11 and ATP12A, which are uniquely expressed by the primary, and a slightly higher expression in ABCC1, ABCC2, and ABCC3. Uh, another family of transporters, it's the SLC, and these are also similar across the models, green, green, red, red, green, very similar. Uh, briefly, the primary only expresses SLC44A4 and the IPSC SLC2A14 and SLC2A3. Higher expression in primary, SLC25A14, SLC25A27, and 51A. So overall, what we have here is an IPSC airway model, which is similar in terms of gene expression to a primary airway model, and especially in terms of xenobiotic metabolism genes. But although they're similar in gene expression, can we identify the same tox responses in both models when exposed to chemicals? To answer to this question, we treated these, chemical, uh, these models with five chemicals, amiodarone, paraquat, cerium dioxide, bosulfan, and benzoapapyrene. All of these have a different uh, mode of toxicity and activate different stress response pathways. For cerium dioxide, it is unknown, for example. But before we make uh, any analysis, we check for the cytotoxicity to make sure that it doesn't kill any of our cells, which it did not, because it was not significantly different to DMSO. Uh, I will go through these slides very quickly, but what you, what I can, what you can see is that the TR, the TR value is unchanged after treatment with cerium dioxide. Neither are, the, are the, the membranes when observed by Brightfield. It affected slightly more the IPSC model than the primary because there's 87 differentially expressed genes. But this is what's, where, uh, what is the most important about this uh, study. And uh, I used the, path, the annotation from uh, a few of the ESRs from N3 with their help uh, to, to make a Z-score calculation, uh, which was put in place by Sarah. And uh, what it does it, it, is it looks the most enriched pathways amongst all the genes that are differentially expressed. If it is above two, more genes are, of this pathway are expressed. If it's zero, it doesn't change anything compared to the control. And if it's negative, it means other pathways are being affected. So from the cerium dioxide particles, we see nothing in the primary and a slight activation of STAT2 in the IPSC. So it was, it was slightly more fragile to the cerium dioxide nanoparticles. Although they are very similar to each other, we can still say. Uh, for amiodarone, on the other hand, we have 32 genes for the IPSC and 280 for the primary. So the primary was more affected by it. And uh, the TR is unchanged, as well as the barriers on Brightfield. Uh, we see similar pathways, no activation, negative Z-scores, which means that other pathways to the, to the ones we're looking for are, are being affected. Then we looked at basulfan, which also did not affect significantly the TR value or the, the barriers on Brightfield, but it equally affected the, the IPSC and the primary model. What we can see is that in both models, we have P53 and NRF2 activation, which is absolutely amazing because it's the same prediction. For paraquat dichloride, uh, we have a higher uh, amount of differentially expressed genes in the primary with 1,200, quite a lot compared to the IPSC, which is of 600, and a slight reduction in the TR. We also see um, by Brightfield, we see some we see no difference on the barrier. We see activation of ATF4, NRF2, and XBP in both models, but P53 is more activated in the primary, while NF-kappa B in the IPSC. 
I think P53 is more activated in the primary because it, it induced more uh, cell death while being more allergic to, uh, to the iPSC. Uh, the benzo alpha pyrene, on the other hand, was very similar in both models, very similar responses. Same thing, no effect on the TR and the barriers. Uh, in both models, CYP1A1 was the most affected gene with the highest upregulation, underlying further showing that some CYPs not shown at base levels are induced when, when treated with drugs. And here we see also very similar responses with AHR and NF-kappa-B activation and NRF2. Uh, very similar and specific response of benzo alpha pyrene 500 microgram per ml. So when exposed to the chemicals, the IPSC primary model respond in similar ways, which makes the model even further interesting and uh, exciting to work with. However, we're now in 2020, and the world is under a world pandemic of the, of the lung airway caused by the virus SARS-CoV-2. And we asked ourselves if this, if this model can also be useful to study the disease. I'm sure you already know a lot about the COVID-19 crisis, probably more than me. There's, al there's already 1,600,000 dead people up, up till today, which is uh, very unfortunate. What is fortunate, however, is that our model has AC2 receptor, which is the receptor to which the virus binds to using the spike protein. And if, we, if the cells have ACE2 and TMPRSS2, the infection can take place and the, vi the virion can enter inside of the cell and replicate. Uh, the TempoSeq analysis shows that the iPSC airway model is, uh, has an expression of ACE2. And what's also interesting is that it's higher than the primary model. So I did a sectioning and I stained for AC2 and TMPRSS. And as you can see here, it's mostly expressed on the apical side, which is quite interesting. In, collabor in collaboration with uh, Liverpool and the School of Tropical Medicine, uh, we infected the cells, the lung model, with the SARS-CoV-2 virus from the apical side. And we measured the amount of variants produced and we could see uh, more than a threefold increase within 48 hours. And we can also see spike protein being present by immunostaining uh, after sectioning the constructs. Uh, as conclusion, what I can say is that we have successfully developed and characterized a new IPSC airway model at an air-liquid interface, which is very comparable to the primary model uh, in terms of gene expression, in terms of xenobiotic gene expression, and in terms of tox response to chemicals. Of course, we would need to test more chemicals to make uh, stronger conclusions, but the data that we've obtained so far is very, very encouraging and exciting. And uh, of course, finally, uh, the new data that our model can be infected by SARS-CoV-2 is equally interesting, and we will definitely pursue uh, this path in the future. I would like to thank everybody at New Cells Biotech, Linda Lacko, and Lyle Armstrong Lab uh, for their friendship and guidance throughout the PhD. Amazing people. I'd like to thank Jelle van der Boer uh, from Rye University who helped me uh, with the cilia imaging. And I'd like to thank the people from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine for the SARS-CoV-2 infection. And most importantly, my dearest friends at Team N3 who have taught me so much and without you, nothing would, would have been possible. Uh, thank you very, very much for everything, all your help, and uh, I'm very sad that the project is over, but it turned out to be something very uh, important and valuable for me. Once again, uh, thank you and enjoy the rest of the talks. I hope you enjoyed mine, and uh, goodbye. If you have any questions, you can email me here. Bye-bye.